And they come down towards me and they come over and they introduce themselves. And the first one goes, hi, I'm Elder Salem. The next one says, hi, I'm Elder Merrill. And I was just like, I did like a comedic double take. And I was like, I looked and it said, you know, spelled the same way as Merrill Osmond. And I was like, because I mean, I don't mean this lightly. Like Merrill Osmond saved my life at a time. I was in like a really difficult, difficult time. So him being called Elder Merrill was like a sign, like, you know, it's like, it's like it a little, like, little personal, personal touch for you. Yeah. It was like, it was like Heavenly Father saying, you know, you're safe. This is where you need to be. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. David Snell here with another very special guest. We are here today with Rachel Potts. Rachel, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. And you you are hailing from not the United States. You're nope. you're over in our uh, in our brother kingdom. What do we call it? <laughs> you're in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in northeast England. Yeah. What uh, where what city is that? Like Newcastle, Newcastle upon Tyne. Okay. So it's like right okay. above, like it's right at the top of England, just before Scotland. Right on. Cool. Welcome. So what, so it's, it's in the morning here in Utah. What time is it there? 5 PM. 5 PM. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, we're going to be talking about your conversion story today. Um, mm -hmm. but before we get to that, maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, tell us kind of what, wh who you are, where you're from, what your deal is, what you're doing with life, the whole shebang. Yeah. So I'm Rachel. I am 24. I have been a member of the church for Nearly five years. It's five years this week. Um, I, um, I I enjoy going to concerts and I love music and um, I do a lot of performing in theatres and, and bits and pieces like that. So I, I, I keep myself busy um, and it's it's just it's really good to be here. Yeah. Name off some of your favourite music artists. <laughs> well, we'll get into that. Um, so the Osmonds is like number one. Um, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. Um, I like all sorts. I'm a big like seventies rock fan, and I like like fifties and sixties. I'm I'm very like old fashioned. Yeah, American music or British? American, yeah. English. I like American. I like a bit of British. I like it's a mixture of stuff. I like some Australian bands and right on pieces like that. Yeah, all, Good. all sorts. I'm not oh. picky. <laughs> And um, are you in school right now? Or are you living with yeah. family? Um, both. So I, I live with my grandparents. Okay. Um, and I study part-time in, in an online university. I'm studying criminology. Oh, currently. cool. So, yeah. My sister-in-law did kind of a forensics criminology thing mm -hmm. as well. But that's very cool. That's a, that's a fun subject to be studying. Uh, I, it's unfortunate that it's... One that needs to be studied, but yeah, somebody's got to do interesting. it. It's yeah. interesting. Very interesting. So, well, let's jump into your story then. You've said you've been a member for five years. Yeah. And it's coming up. Yeah. And where do we, where does your story start? I hope it starts with the Osmonds. It genuinely does. Okay. <laughs> tell, tell us the story. Um. So it's kind of, it's, it's a long one. It's like, so like my story started kind of, First time I heard about the church, I was probably about eight years old, um, because my grandma was a fan of the Osmonds in the seventies, and then when I was growing up, she introduced them to me, and we went to concerts and all that kind of stuff. But I remember before we went to my first ever concert, which was an Osmonds concert, when I was eight years old, it was their fiftieth anniversary tour. She told me that they were Mormons and was just telling me like, oh yeah, so they don't drink tea, they don't drink coffee. And was just telling me like eight years old about like about the Mormon church. And I was like, oh, that's really like, and it's so that's just kind of like how it started there. Um, and I just, I, I can remember her telling me about their older brothers, that they went on a mission. They went on missions and apparently um, she told, she told me a story about how when she was a, she was young that some missionaries had knocked on her her mom's door when she was out and she got a book of mormon from them she took it and she gave it to my grandma and my, it got lost like over the years of like moving and stuff but my grandma had a book of mormon when she was younger um 
so yeah that so that's kind of like how i first heard about the church was like i was eight years old there was kind of like a seed was planted uh-huh. but, <laughs> but i wouldn't be like until like 11 years later until i would finally get to church thank but, you um, donnie and marie donnie and marie if you're listening <laughs> you gotta you gotta let this girl know that uh that she's great. She's she's a super fan. So so eleven years pass before yeah, you is. actually kind of become reintroduced to the church. Well, so it kind of remained a presence in twenty fifteen. I went through a rough time. I went through like a really bad like moment of depression and anxiety and stuff like that. And strangely enough, we had tickets. Me and my grandma to see the Osmonds. It was Meryl, Jay, and Jimmy. So it was just the three of them. It was their Christmas tour. And it was the 21st of December. So it was like right up to Christmas. I was like, I was feeling really rubbish. I just, I was like, I don't know if I want to go. I just, I'm not feeling great. You know, I was feeling like just really like lost and I wasn't sure where I was going and stuff like that. Um, but we were sat in the second row. Um, we went and during that concert, it was the first time I'd like felt truly happy and at peace for a long time. Um, and it's it's a feeling that I now recognize to be the spirit. Now that I'm thinking about it, like I've recognized it now to be the spirit that I didn't obviously know what it was at the time. Um, and after that, I kind of went chasing after that feeling for like months after that. And I I did that by watching Osmond videos <laughs> and that stuff like so that. That is so funny. Music. And I, you know, I, I could still recognize it. I mean, I was listening to, I remember I came across one of their albums called The Plan and it's kind of a concept album and it's all about the plan of salvation and stuff like that. And it was, it was like, I, I really connected with this album and there's a song in it called Are You Up There? And there's like a line in it that says, I don't want a miracle or to see you in the air, but are you up there? And I just... I remember, like, because that kind of put into words how I was, like, feeling at the time. Um, and it was kind of like, it It just it felt like it was, like, God speaking through music. It was because that was kind of like, just it really put into words how I was feeling and what I was struggling with. Um, so I found that, like, really cool. So I kind of, like, you know, it was kind of digging deeper and there was more stuff that was showing and... I remember I kind of felt a connection with Meryl Osmond, who's the lead singer of the Osmonds. And we have similar experiences with depression and anxiety and stuff. And I kind of started to work through it. Um, And after a period of time, I noticed that they were sharing quotes on Facebook from general authorities and like apostles and stuff like that. And I was noticing that that peace that I was feeling whilst listening to the music and watching videos, I was feeling while I was reading these quotes and they were always quotes that I needed to hear at that time. Mm-hmm. So there was kind of like, I, I feel like I didn't want to acknowledge that at that moment, but I'd noticed that there was something there. Um, so that was an interesting moment where I was like, Oh, Okay. I guess, I guess we'll ignore that for now, but <laughs> possibly <laughs> come back to it later. <laughs> but you were making connections. Yeah, it was, it was like a long process. I mean, we're about like two years, like from 2015, we're at about 2017 now. And I was like, I was kind of making these connections um, between like this feeling of peace that I was feeling that I was chasing after that wasn't necessarily specific to the Osmonds. It was like more, it was more than that. Yeah. Um, you could tell then, that you could tell that they were just kind of the messenger. Yeah. But it was something else. You think you're a hero? Uh, it's the messenger. Yeah, it was, it was, it was something that wasn't specific to them because it wasn't just through their music where I was acknowledging this feeling. Um, right. And in 2017, I mean, you were 17 years old? Yeah, 17, 18. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, um, I mean, at this point I had a book of Mormon like at home and the way that I got this book of Mormon is so funny because I was at my auntie's house and I always used to go to their bookshelves and I would look 
because like, we have very similar tastes in books and DVDs and stuff. And I'd be like, oh, which one can I take home with me this time? And I was kind of like looking on it and there was a book of all on the shelf. I was like, oh, I was like, can I have this? And they were like, yeah, I don't know why it's like, apparently my auntie's husband at the time was at work and he works at like a computer place. Like he is like, a, um, like a, just like a tech support person. And it just happened to be at work and he picked it up and took it home. He's not religious in the slightest hmm. and put it on the shelf. And then I saw, I was like, can I have this? Like, yeah, you can have it. I don't want it. <laughs> um, How convenient. But, yeah. Like, and it is so funny because usually like the, like, I've noticed that the other Book of Mormon, like copies of the Book of Mormon that I've got have like a stamp in it saying the mission and all the different information. This one was, had nothing in it. It was just, mm-hmm. he picked it up at work and took it home, put it on the shelf. So I had like a book. So this was like two years I had this on my shelf. Um, and then in October of 2017, Marie had shared a link to General Conference and was inviting people to watch it and listen to it. Um, and I managed to catch the end of the sisters session. And it was then President Ukdorf's three sisters talk that he was giving. And I, I usually have like a really bad attention span. I can't focus on things. Um, but I could not look away from this talk. It was just like, I was just like completely absorbed in it. And again, there was a, a quote in it that I really needed to hear at that moment. And I've got it written down. It says, even when you stumble, even when you turn away from him, God loves you. If you are feeling lost, abandoned or forgotten, fear not. The good shepherd will find you. He will lift you upon his shoulders and he will carry you home. And I just kind of sat after he said that, was like, whoa. I was like, what is this? <laughs> I feel like that was the moment when I realized that the feelings that I was, of peace that I was feeling were not specific to the Osmonds. It was, mm. you know, it was coming from somewhere else. And I feel like that was the first time I properly acknowledged the spirit as as something of its own being and not sort of like connected to something else. Um, so I was kind of like obsessed from that point. Um, obsessed with? Like learning the church. about the church. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I had um, kind of started low-key researching it. I was... I was trying not to make it too much of a thing, but like it was very much becoming a thing. It was, um, and it was, it was so crazy because the stuff that I was reading about was kind of stuff that I'd already kind of believed in. Mm-hmm. It was, it was so like I was reading about the plan of salvation, and since I was a kid, you know, I've al- I've always believed in God, but since I was a kid, I've never truly been able <clears throat> to wrap my head around the idea of a clean cut heaven and hell. It just, it never, it never made sense to me. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point where I had come up with my own theory. I was like, well, what if there's like different levels of heaven? Where like, depending on like how good you were, depends on what level of heaven you get. And there's not necessarily a hell, but there's just different levels of heaven. I read about the plan of salvation. I was like, that's it. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking of. But it's down as like legit doctrine. I'm like, what? Like, this is so cool. And there was the same with like the Godhead. Mm-hmm. I had, I, that's how I'd always believed the Trinity to be. You know, I always thought the Trinity was three separate people. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know until I read about the Godhead that that's not what the Trinity was. So like, that was kind of like, and it, so it was kind of stuff that I'd already believed in, but was down as like legit doctrine. I'm like, oh, this is really me. Um, yeah. It's almost so like you're, of- you're being reminded of something that, you've known your whole life. Yeah, that's kind of exactly how it felt when I was reading about the different kind of like the bits of doctrine within the church. It was just like, it wasn't like I was learning it for the first time. Mm-hmm. It was just like a re- like a refresher. It was the same with like living prophets mm-hmm. as well. It's like, well, obviously, like- Of why- course God would have prophets today. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, well, why would that stop? <laughs> you know? So yeah. it was just, it was just things that just made, it just made sense. It, yeah. I, I, it wasn't like I wasn't left with more questions. Like I just, it was, it made sense. Um, so this kind of kept going. So did, did you, did you have, 
uh, friends or family members that were members of the church or oh, no. just, like was, just you? Just me. Yeah. Just you, I your Book totally... of Mormon, the Osmonds and the internet. Yeah, literally. Like that's kind of like, so it kind of, it was like that until April of 2018. And again, I was at a Merrill Osmond event. And I was, it was this, it's this weekend event that he does called Serenity. And it's like a healing retreat. It's very like, um, there's about a hundred people and it's, it's very like low key and you just sit and you make friends and it's, it's, and there's like a concert and meals and talks and it's, it's all really cool. On like the first or second night, I was sat next to someone who happened to be a member of the church and we were chatting about religion in God. And then she asked me, she's like, are you a member of the church? And I was like, no, I'm not, but I am really interested. So she gets up the gospel library app on her phone and goes to Moroni and starts talking about Moroni's promise. And we read it together. And she says, um, go and uh, pray about that. So I did that night. <laughs> I, Cause at this time like that I was reading about it, I wasn't actually asking God. I wasn't praying about it. I was just reading about it. I was like, yeah, that's neat. That makes sense. And that was it, you mm -hmm. know? This was the first time, I mean, I'd prayed before, but I'd never prayed vocally and I'd never made it like really personal. Like I, in this moment, like I, it was my most sincere prayer. Like I was like, I needed to know in this moment. I was like, I need to know if this is true. I didn't feel anything immediately, but I got into bed and it was like immediate. Like when I got into bed, it was like, it was like hit by a truck. <laughs> it was, it was like, whoa. The, the only way I've managed to describe it in a way is it felt like a panic attack, but in a good way, because it was so <laughs> overwhelming. I, so love, I love these descriptions. I'm pretty sure that's what it says in the scriptures, right? Like the yeah, spirit yeah, yeah, shall like, come upon thee and it will feel like you've been hit by a truck and a good <laughs> panic attack will ensue. Because <laughs> it was so overwhelming. Sure. But it, yeah. was, but it was a good overwhelming. I mean, yeah. as someone who suffered from anxiety and has had panic attacks and it's like that sort of like, oh my goodness. Um, it was like that, but it was, it was so like a calming Overwhelmed. It's it's really hard to describe how it felt in that moment, and in that moment, I was never more sure of anything than yeah, this the church is true. Like, of course it is. Yeah, like it's it's all true. And the 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 way I've thought about it, like why it was so overwhelming, is because at this point I was maybe what two or three years into reading about the church, and you know having these kind of instances where it's like yeah, that makes sense but not asking. And I felt like Heavenly Father was going, you finally asked, uh -huh. you know, you finally asked. I can finally tell you, yes, it's true. From, from that moment on, I knew I was going to join the church. I just didn't know when. Um, but um, I mean, I was spending all of my time reading the Book of Mormon, um, like in school. I was in college at the time and I'd be in lessons and I'd be on my phone, but I was reading the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Like in the middle of class. <laughs> oh man. Nobody knew. Like I was at home and I'd be in my room and I was reading the Book of Mormon. Yeah, such a rebel. Like reading the Book of Mormon during class. Scriptures. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. So you must have been some missionaries dream when oh, yeah. you they came along. They thought I was a prank. They thought I was pranking. Did they? Me. Yeah, they fully they told me later on that they said they thought that I was already a member from like another state. Wow. Cause so, I mean, so how, how did you contact them? It was a long time after. So this is in April when I first prayed about the church and I was learning about it. Um, each week I wanted to go to church, but something would come up or I'd forget, you know, there was always something in the way and it got really disheartening after a while. Like, I kind of stopped reading my scriptures and stopped praying. And it was like really tough. Like it got to a point, I was like dreaming about the church. It was like every, every waking moment. Like and also when I was asleep, like I remember one time I dreamt that I needed, like I was having an interview to join the church. I didn't know about baptismal interviews, but I had to have an interview to join the church. And like, I remember having that. I remember, um, 
having dreams where I got baptized. I remember at one point I had a dream where I was on a bus and I looked out at the window and there was a group of missionaries standing and I ran to the bus driver. I was like, stop the bus. And I got off and I ran to them and started talking to them. So it was like every moment, like I was just, it was, you know, it, it was insane. It was all I could think about. Um, and then like I'd stopped reading the Book of Mormon when I kind of, like I got a bit disheartened because it, we were in about June, July maybe, and I still hadn't gotten to church. And I was like, oh, this is like really upsetting. Um, cause I had, I had, I was a bit nervous about going to church cause I knew nobody. Um, um, and then I was scrolling through Twitter. And I came across a picture of someone at their own baptism and they were wearing like the white jumpsuit and they had a big smile on their face. And I just kind of saw it. I was like, I want that. So that's what I want. And I started reading the book of Mormon again. I kind of, you know, started again. It was, it was all really good. I still wasn't able to go to church, but one morning in August, about 3 a.m., I woke up with the feeling, the thought, you know, you're going to church today. And I was like, okay. So I got up and I got dressed at like three o'clock in the morning. And I go on, um, it was mormon.org at the time. And I started an online chat with the missionaries. And it was some sisters in Hawaii, hmm. I think. Because um, it was like three o'clock in the morning. They were the only ones who were awake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, it was like about five o'clock when I started talking to them. By the time I'd like built up the courage to kind of, start the message and I was like pacing like backwards and forwards you know I was I was a nightmare to live with um and we started chatting and you know they were like oh well if you don't mind we'll pass your details over to the missionaries in your area I was like yeah that's great and they come down towards me and they come over and they introduce themselves and the first one goes hi I'm Elder Salem the next one says hi I'm Elder Merrill and I was just like I did like a comedic double take and I was like, I looked and it said, you know, spelled the same way as Meryl Osmond. And I was like, cause I mean, I don't mean this lightly. Like Meryl Osmond saved my life at a time. I was in like a really difficult, difficult time. So him being called Elder Meryl was like a sign, like, you know, it's like, it's like it a, little, like, a little personal, personal touch for you. Yeah. It was like, it was like heavenly father saying, you know, you're safe. This is where you need to be. Um, I, I remember messaging my grandma being like, one of the missionaries is called Elder Merrill. And she goes, well, there's your sign. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was, it was, um, it was crazy. I mean, I, like, we went on a tour of the chapel. And at this point, I was up to Messiah 10 in the Book of Mormon. And we're talking, we're going around the chapel. And they're like looking at me this entire time, like, what, what is this? You know, I tell them all about the first vision. You know, I'm like, <laughs> that I was up to Messiah 10 and about the plan of salvation. And then this entire time, they're like, what, like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking it's a prank. Yeah. They're fully thinking it's a prank. It's like, this, like, this can't be real. Um, and then we get, this is all before sacrament meeting. We get to the room that has the font in. We start talking about baptism and you know, they're saying, you know, like, we see this going towards baptism. I don't know about you, but we see it's going towards baptism. I was like, oh, well, so do I. I was like, I fully see this going towards baptism. And then Elder Salem says, he offers the invitation to be baptized in that moment. And I, I had decided up to that point that I wouldn't make a definitive decision, like, of yes or no, until I was asked. And... When I was asked, the only answer that felt right was yes. So we set my date for my baptism before sacrament meeting, before my first ever sacrament meeting. This is like 20 minutes after I met them for the first time. Wow. Um, and we set the date for the 1st of September, which was 13 days later. Um, and, you know, um, we were... One of the funny things about Elder Merrill is he was originally assigned to the Birmingham mission and I'm in the Leeds mission. Oh, Bur okay. Not Birmingham, Alabama. 
No. In the United <laughs> in States. So like yeah. they're, they're next to each other. Okay. But the boundaries, the mission boundaries changed. Elder Merrill came with the boundary change. He'd only been in my ward for two weeks, around two weeks when I first went to church. And I'd been trying to get to church since April, but things kept coming up to stop me. So like, it was one of those things where it's like, I had to trust in God's timing. Because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't time. I probably would have still gotten baptized. Um, cause I, it, my testimony at that point was so strong. Like I just, I, I knew I wanted to get baptized. However, that moment of Elder Merrill being there after me praying for a sign that it was, that I was in the right place has been such a strong foundation for my testimony now. Mm-hmm. It's one of them things where I haven't been able to be like, oh, well, that's just a really weird coincidence. Because it's so specific. Yeah. So, I mean, so that's kind of like how I was at that moment. So we sit in sacrament meeting and the two talks. Um, well, I found out later that that morning, my one of my now friends who was speaking in that sacrament meeting had had a feeling that morning that there was going to be someone new at church. Hmm. So she kind of changed her talk a little bit. Um, and then the other speaker mentioned the Osmonds in her talk, which I, and then the, the missionaries are like, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen every week, by the way. Cause I'd mentioned that I was a fan of the Osmonds at that point. It's, it's such a good example that God is in the details and that, um, that we need to trust that he has a plan and that if we tr- like, and if we believe that he has a plan, we need to trust in that plan. Um, cause that's kind of like where I was. I was really struggling up to that point. I was like, I'm never going to get a church and it's really difficult, but it, the timing was beyond perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to have a lesson every other day. Um, at one point the, the missionaries wanted to push my baptism date back a bit because they were worried that they wouldn't be able to teach me everything in time. Mm-hmm. This is like my second lesson. And I said, nope, absolutely not. I'm not waiting any longer. No, absolutely not. <sighs> what? And then they kind of like go off a bit and they have a quick discussion and then they come back and they're like, so do you know what the word of wisdom is? I was like, oh yes, I do actually. I've actually been living it for the last few months. <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, you're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's kind of stayed as it, as it is, there was kind of like a couple of things that kind of might have stopped it. Like, for example, the, the missionaries that taught me um, were the zone leaders. So they had to get the district leaders to do my interview. Um, and they were worried that they wouldn't be able to get them in to do it and stuff like that. So there was that difficult moment. And then the day of my baptism, um, the, the hot water broke at the chapel. Classic. <laughs> so it's like the morning of, of my baptism and they're like, hot water is not working. It's like, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, but it fixed and it was all good. And yeah, I got, I got baptized. And then on the Sunday I had got, I had my confirmation and after sacrament meeting, I had a, <laughs> my temple recommend interview with the bishop. Um, wow. To, um, and then the week after, the Saturday after, I was at the temple doing baptisms. Wow. Was that just so, awesome for you? It was, oh, it was so cool. I was blown away. I couldn't believe that I was there. Like, because at that point, it was, it, it was such a, just an abstract dream. I was like, this is like, I would like, I would really love this, but it's not going to happen. And then like three weeks after meeting the missionaries, I'm at the temple. I'm like, whoa. I was blown away. I was speechless when I ended. I was like, I think like I cried after my baptism. I came out with the water and I just sobbed. <laughs> like oh. I was, I was, a, I was a wreck. But um, it was just, it was just such an incredible experience. All my family came along. So like my grandma, my granddad, my mom, my auntie, my brother, and my little sister were all at my baptism, and it was really, it was really nice. Um, that is an incredible story. 
Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Now it's been five years, just about. Yep. Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling? Great. I was, um, I, I mean, I feel like as everybody has, I've gone through my like faith crises and stuff like that. And, um, but I've worked through them and I've gotten through them stronger than I was before it. And I feel like they've been for my benefit. Um, I got to go through the temple in October last year. Um, so that was a, a really neat experience. Um, and I've got to go a few times since. So it's, I, I'm very happy that it happened the way that it did. And I feel like it happened the, the perfect, the perfect time for me. I feel like if it had happened any earlier, it wouldn't have been right. I had to go through those different challenges before I got baptized. Um, I feel like it's, it's a good example of God's perfect plan. Like, uh, like we have to trust that he can see more than we do. Mm -hmm. We can just see what's in front of us and we can't see the big picture. Um, at the time I was really stressed and I was like, Oh, well, why can't I just go? Why, why is everything just not working? Whereas, you know, God's like, well, you can't go until that moment. So, you know, just be patient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what uh, advice would you have for our viewers, many of whom are probably, well, are not members of the church, at least yet. Uh, what advice would you have for them, for those that are watching that are kind of currently where you were several years ago, where they're learning about the church, they're maybe facing some opposition, they're thinking about going to church for the first time. What, what advice would you have for them? I feel like just trust Trust in his plan, trust in his timing, because um, it'll work out in the end. And I have a really strong testimony in in God's timing, and that you know, it's you just have to keep keep the faith and just just keep going. You know, don't don't give up. Because I I noticed that in that small brief moment where I did give up, my outlook on life was so much darker than it was when I was um, striving towards this goal that I had. Um, so I feel like just don't give up, keep going and just stay strong in it and just trust that it'll work out in the end. Rachel Potts, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for your testimony and for your inspiring story. Everybody watching, thank you for being here and we'll see you next time.